of religion, for example, like which rubs people perhaps the wrong way, but no one on the planet is Christian. No one. Right? They may subscribe to the tenets of Christianity. That's a very different. It's semantic, but it's incredibly important because to me, why, why I'm not into religion so much is it tends to create diversity, right? It, it totally. creates division. So when a baby's born, the baby doesn't even know its own name, it doesn't know its gender, it certainly doesn't know what religion apparently it ascribes to. So to declare that I am something, I am is the root, you know, that is the precursor to how we define ourselves. Right. So it's, it's not wrong, it's just inaccurate. You know, like to say, I'm Muslim, I'm Buddhist, I'm Christian. It's not wrong, it's just inaccurate. It's not a truth. But as uh -huh. soon as you become collapsed with it, it's no different than someone saying, I'm fat. That equally isn't true. Right. But as soon as you become identified with the words that follow the I am, then you think that's who you are and you're going to defend it, which is why, you know, there's so much bloodshed. So um, that's where I have issue with any of that. You know, whereas as soon as we declare something, Certainly that has been uh, generational, like, you know, if your parents were this and that, whatever it might be. Your parents mm -hmm. could be overweight and now I'm overweight. Like, it doesn't have to be specific to religion. Mm -hmm. It's just whatever we inherit in the way that we define ourselves, then anything that is in contrast to that or conflict to it is going to meet resistance. And that's where it gets ugly. So what is the correct use of I am? Well, it's about as far as you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the question? No, just I am. Like, that's it, right? Like, it, it's, I mean, we're going down deep here, but when I really got that I am, what more do I need, was one of my quotes, right? So I, I'm sure you're familiar with my work. That's how it comes through me is these short quotes and insights. And uh -huh. I, I really got to the point of where I shedded so many of the different levels of who I thought I was and all huh. the different layers of my particular persona uh -huh. that I got to I am, what more do I need? And within I am is everything. Which, of course, it starts to become esoteric, but I am nurse is consciousness, God, love, whatever you want to call it, to me, the absolute. So I am is all potentialities. Then we declare who we are on top of that. So that's why I love, you know, working with actors over the years, because they do this for a, a career, right? They, they pretend to be somebody. Mm -hmm. Tom Hanks wasn't gay and dying of HIV, but he played that in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So he could say, I am whatever his character was, Michael, but he knows when he goes home that he's straight and he's married and apparently not dying of AIDS, right? So he's pretending. The trouble is the persona that we take on from a very young age is still a pretense. It's just we do it for three, four, five decades. So we think that's who we are as opposed to remembering, no, I'm all, pos I'm all possibilities. But I've declared myself in such a way and often it's not a choice. It was something that was given to me. You're being told by a parent. You're being told by a teacher. This is who you are. You're a failure. You're not good enough. And then we adopt that, and that becomes the mental prison that and then people live in the, for the majority of their lives. So, Well, I like to pull both sides of the spectrum, right? So you've got the I am a victim. I mm -hmm. am sick. I am, you know, miserable. I am fat. I am ugly. Whatever. Mm -hmm. I am Danica. Mm -hmm. But could we not reframe this in a way that is of equal strength and power in a positive way, like I am well. I mean, I feel actually, I feel so, it feels so Wayne Dyer right now. Right. Um, the I am that I am discourses or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think is a book maybe you wrote. Um, but I am well, like I am happy, I am successful, like I am peaceful. Yeah. I, can we not use it the other? Is there a way to use I am? A hundred percent. That's just the root, you know? So for sure, this is. You know, my work is dissolution. I don't say I solve people's problems, I dissolve them. So what I'm dissolving is the, 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 the current attachment to the I am that tends to, to veer towards the derogatory, the deleterious, the negative, the limited. But then, yes, mm -hmm. once you remove that, you step back into what we could say is this realm of all opportunities, pure potential. And then through declaration, we get to say something else. So, yes, right. I am extraordinary. Like one of my favorite athletes who actually is just, he's an MLB player. We worked together for six seasons. He had five, six all-stars in a row, just incredible success. And it was just so fun to work together. He took a couple of years off and he just, I spoke to him this morning. So he's asked to work with me again this season. And one of my favorite conversations with him, he was, he was pretty relentless as an athlete, super disciplined, incredibly determined. And one of the words that we played with as a declaration was unstoppability. What does that look like? Because especially in baseball, it's a game of failure, right? Like three out of 10 and you're an all-star. Like that's, that's not good ratio, right? To be 30% 
and yet you're an all-star speaks to how much failure there is in the game as a hitter. So anyway, I asked him the question. I said, so what, why are you unstoppable? And he came up with, you know, all of these incredibly valid responses. Well, you know, I'm, I'm dedicated. I put in the work. Reasons that justified being unstoppable. But because of the virtue, by virtue of our conversation and how I worked with him, I said, well, those aren't wrong. They're not inaccurate. But what I'm asking you to look at is you're unstoppable because you say so. And he still to this date cites that conversation. He's like, wow. Like, it's a declaration of who I be, who I am, that is the container that I step within that shows up the discipline and the dedication and the professionalism. It's not because of those things. I declare myself to be unstoppable, and then I honor my word, which is really the power of language. So why I use the expression, mm. words are the wardrobe for the soul. Mm. So our soul is limitless, but by virtue of the words we use, it will con contain whatever is potential. It will create the limitations, invariably, because most people's sure. words are, like you said, limited. But once we remove that constraint, then we get to declare words that are more expansive. So for me, I say, like, I'm, I'm the luckiest human being on the planet. Now, where's the evidence for that, other than my declaration to it, which then becomes sure. self-fulfilling? It's really, it pulls for the, yeah. the opportunity to, for me to vibrate and feel at a certain level, mm -hmm. but then also the magic of how life can show up by virtue of that frequency that I hold because of the declaration I make. How's yeah, that? words are yeah, <laughs> words are words are spells. Spelling, it's yes. in the, it's in the word spelling. Abracadabra. Abracadabra, isn't that what it, isn't it? What That's is the it? the Hebrew translation. As I speak, so I create magic. 